right now, we are in one of the most important Christian churches in all of Ireland. It's definitely one of the older ones to have survived, dating back to the 1200s. Shortly after the Anglo-Norman invasion, welcome to the namesake of Kilkenny, St. Kenneth's Cathedral. Let's explore. The man who lays to rest here was trying with the church, at the time the Catholic Church, to get back his property. He had a complicated relationship with the church. He was accused of being too greedy and unfairly accusing people of heresy and witchcraft. This man lost everything for a little while. And by the time he ended up getting it back, by the 9, 15, 1359 to about 1360, he passed away just a little after that. He barely got to enjoy all of those years of fighting to get his property back, barely got to enjoy the wealth he amassed. This is Bishop Ledred. He is a very controversial figure in this town of Kilkenny because he accused a woman of witchcraft, the first person to be accused of heresy and witchcraft here in Ireland. We'll learn a little bit about that as we walk through the town. Right up here, we see a timber roof. Join me today as we explore the secrets of Kilkenny. Okay, so right over here, this is a key to the history of the city. Throughout most of Ireland's history, with its close relationship with the UK, for better or worse, there was always infighting between Protestants and Catholics. The powers of Protestant Europe, like the Dutch, like parts of England, and Catholic powers like the French. This is John Butler. 
he was someone associated with the Catholic Church, and he was also associated with France. He, his family, the Butler family, flee to France when the Protestants took control. But luckily, he managed to come back. Not specifically this man, but his family. And when they came back, they were one of the major powers in the city all the way until 1935. So this guy, John Butler, was the Marquez, and he died, or Marquez, he died in 1854, apparently from a drowning accident. These are the tombs of Piers Butler and the Earl of Ossuary. He's the Earl of Ossuary. This is what early Anglo-Normans looked like. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Kilkenny. But what does Kilkenny mean? Where is it? It's about an hour and a half train ride away from Dublin, about the same time when it comes to driving. But all, all along Ireland, there's a lot of places that have the first three letters, kill. <laughs> no, it's not the English kill, which has another L, which is associated with murder. Um, and no, it's not the Dutch kill, because really the Dutch don't have any influence here on Ireland, though they could have if uh, one certain historical event went differently. So no, it's not the Dutch kill, which means kind of a waterway. Kill is an old Irish word for church. And Kenny 
Kenny is a kind of anglicization of the Irish word for Kenneth. St. Kenneth. Church of St. Kenneth, which is right here. There has been a church here since the 500s AD. But this church that we're seeing here was built in the 1200s AD. Let me show you around from the outside. Today we're going to explore the areas of Kilkenny. Is this a Protestant church? Yes, the church right now is under the Church of Ireland. It's a Protestant church. And I don't have too much time because unfortunately you do crown, close the grounds early at 4.30 p.m. And uh, Mir says it reminds me of South Park. Oh my God, they killed Kenny. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, but it has no relation. And we're pretty, a uh, uh, pretty high area of the actual city. So I think this should not be, this needs to be said. I don't know why people keep asking this. Um, why am I whispering in the church? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> Always get that question when I do a church video and I'm whispering in it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you go into a Christian church, I think the decent thing to do is to whisper. If you're that one person speaking very loudly uh, and you're not part of the service, you're not one of the priests or the clergy members, then you're being a little bit disrespectful. This applies to a lot of religious structures anywhere around the world. May they be Taoist, may they be Islamic, may they be uh, Buddhist, may they be any type of Christian, uh, like evangelist or what whatnot. Be respectful. I'm being respectful in this place. Uh, unless if I have permission to film and, you know, the church is closed for filming. That might happen sometimes, but most times I'm, not, I'm going in. It's not too planned ahead with the, any of these churches. Right here is the oldest building in all of Kilkenny. Still standing, of course, built in the 1100s. But this is very special because Ireland is known for having these long round towers. This one is at seven stories tall, more than 100 feet tall. But these round towers, what were they used for? Well, a lot of people believe that they were used for lookout points, to see far ahead in the landscape and see, oh, is there any Viking coming through? Are the Anglo-Normans about to invade? No, it was, it was a bell tower. <laughs> These were bell towers. Uh, they were not meant for lookout points in the least bit. Uh, because lookout points, apparently they had to use a torch. And if someone were to use a torch up there, uh, it might be very bad news for the entire building. But uh, this dates back to the 1100s. But then in the 1200s, the Anglo-Normans invaded Ireland or a little bit later in the 1100s, and then by the 1200s, they already controlled it. Then they built this. <laughs> B. Griffith says it's for walling up witches. No, not quite, not quite. The cathedral was built in the Gothic style. It was meant to replicate uh, uh, similar cathedrals built by the Anglo-Normans all around England, and of course from there areas of France, which the Normans were from. So, Anglo-Normans loved to astonish and awe their new subjects in any new place they invaded. So they invaded Ireland and in order to awe their new subjects, the Irish people, they built this gigantic cathedral back then. Uh, so imagine seeing this in the 1100s when most buildings are, you know, rather one to two story uh, stone buildings or wood buildings. Um, just imagine seeing this back then.
52 of these round towers still survive on the island, though most of them are laid in ruins. Only two of them in the entire island, and this is one of them, where you can still walk up to the very top. Hey, still open to go up to the top? Yep, do you have a ticket? Uh, I didn't have it with me. I don't think she gave me a ticket, but no, I did buy fine. one. No, yeah, fine. okay. Uh, free now, okay, right? thank you so much. You found dread anyway. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. Right now we're climbing the oldest structure in all of Kilkenny, ladies and gentlemen. Pardon if I sound very winded. It's a very kind of damp, humid day. Um, damp, humid days. I'm not sure if this happens to you. I usually get a little bit more winded than usual. Let me know if this happens to you. God. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is tight. <laughs> All right, we got two more. <laughs> All right, you guys, you guys do. <laughs> give me, give me some round of likes and uh, share this video. <laughs> no, this is not accessible at all. This is tight, this is tight. All right. All right. Oh my God. Nope. Two more. That's tight. Whoa. Live climbing. This is just practice for the live Everest video. All right. One missed there. All right, one more. <laughs> All right, let's go. We're almost there.
Is there a pole to slide down? I wish. Oh, wow. I'm surprised I have service in here. Ireland has good internet service. Bear with me. It's getting rainy. Whew, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> this. Oh. I don't have space here. All right. Okay, if I could just fit through here. Oh. <laughs> this is a, a tight little spot. Yeah, not meant for looking at Vikings coming in. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not meant for Vikings. <laughs> Woo! Oh! My God! Woo! Look at these views. That's crazy. Okay, that was, this is worth it. <laughs> yep, it's worth it. Right here. This is where we're going to walk through. I'm a little bit out of breath. Kill Kenny, ladies and gentlemen, in Ireland, County Kill Kenny, also known as the Midlands, or part of the uh, province of Leinster. Hey, how's it going? So, this are the views of the entire city. It is some view, yeah. Yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Put this down. All right. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, no worries, yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you.
Okay, I'm gonna take my sweet, sweet time ticking here, but so brew yourself a cup of tea, make yourself a cup of coffee, open up a bottle of wine, because we're about to walk the city. But you just gotta give me 10 minutes or so. <laughs> oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a firefighter, so this I can't do fast. <laughs> My feet are too big for this. Descending stairs, a live video. Full experience. Next live stream, watching paint dry. Thank you, Mighty Bull, for the super chat. Oh my God. Hey, David O'Brien. Thank you so much for the super chat as well. $20. That's so kind of you. That really will incentivize me to get a pint after this. <laughs> Don't drink pints before coming here, ladies and gentlemen. Good that these stairs are steady, or these ladder, and this ain't stairs. Hopefully this ladder does not belong to Jacob. This one's better. For the person asking, why is the angle so bad? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I only have two hands. And one of them is holding on to dear life to the handle. Annette, thank you so much for 500 stars. All right, we're close. Pictures, pictures.
made it. Yeah, those uh, those priests had good skills. They had. And probably tiny feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both. Is the staircase new? Uh, it was done in the 90s. 90s, oh, it's pretty sturdy. Yeah, pretty, yeah. yeah it's pretty good. Did they have staircase back then, or was pretty it all much. stone? No, the platforms, are, if actually had a stone spiral staircase, that would mean it needed a stone spine, and that would have caused the tower to collapse. So oh. there's always ladders to platforms. Wow, that's the impressive. The platforms are in exactly the same position, just the ladders are probably at a bit more of an angle. I imagine they would have been a bit more vertical. Yeah. The day, just an ordinary wooden ladder, just propped up to the next level. So. Oh, that means they even had tinier feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. And this is only one of two of them still surviving in the that entire country, climb, right? Yeah, that you can probably climb. Wow, that you can publicly climb. climb. That's amazing. Wow. So the other one's yeah. in Kildare Town. It's in Bridget's Cathedral. In Bridget's Cathedral. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good you. day. Hey, if anyone can let me know what, what accent is, is that man's uh, from? I, I know it's English, but he has such a unique English accent. Let me know. Uh, uh, let me know if anyone could recognize the accent. Very kind of unique, kind of, sounds like a rather royal accent. Uh, so that was the climb. <laughs> I do not recommend that for the faint of heart. Uh, if you're afraid of, of uh, tight spaces and if you're afraid, uh, if you have bad knees, don't do this. Um, but if you do have good knees and not afraid about uh, tight spaces, you can do it. Uh, Gary says it was posh English. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Very unique accent uh, that I haven't heard too much here in Ireland. So here's their garden area. And now let's go into the town. But before we go into the town, I wanted to sh share one little extra fact. Ooh, oh, All right, I gotta stretch, my, stretch out my legs. Ooh, okay. Action Kid says, you know what I'm press, impressed with the most is the great internet service. Action Kid, you're saying you're not impressed by my climbing skills? <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah, it's quite impressing that I got uh, great service inside a medieval tower. So, 1650. Right over here, I, I might have mentioned this very briefly, but Oliver Cromwell won out in the English Civil War. England broke out into civil war because people were tired of royals, but they also were tired of the Catholic, Catholic Church. And the Protestant uh, wanted to take over. Oliver Cromwell particularly hated the Catholics. So once he took control as Lord Protectorate of England, he decided to come over here. He especially wanted to target Ireland because Ireland was a Catholic stronghold. And being a Catholic stronghold just across the Irish Sea was very dangerous to this new ruler. So Oliver Cromwell led a campaign throughout the island. But the thing is, Oliver Cromwell was very heavy-handed. According to one report, he took a church filled with worshippers still inside, Catholic worshippers, locked up the key, and set it on fire. Everyone inside the church burning alive. In other instances, he would kill the women and children, or at least his uh, generals would kill the women and children of the entire towns that they would invade. He was responsible for blowing up the roof of St. Canis. And St. Canis had a roof for more than a decade. And that's why to this day you still have that timber roof as opposed to its original roof. So Cromwell, pretty brutal guy. Rob says his accent was in North English, by the way. Yeah, yeah, definitely not North English. Lorraine, thank you so much for the tip as well. That's one climb you won't do again, says Kay. Kay, you want to go to it? <laughs> Okay, you want to come tomorrow? Okay, you want to come tomorrow? It's, it's worth the views. <laughs> so if anyone doesn't know, Kay 
has been so kind enough to host me on this uh, trip over here. Um, and she showed us the St. Kenneth's that first day we were here. So, <laughs> okay, I'm so glad you're tuning in from so far away. <laughs> Oh, I got a phone booth. If I go inside here, would I go back in time like Bill and Ted? And hopefully not meet Oliver Cromwell himself. That would not be a nice guy to meet. I would not want to meet Bishop Ledred either. We'll learn a little bit more about him as we go to the Atlas Kittler Inn. Uh, maybe I'll go back to Druid times. I'm curious what the Druids were doing. Who wants to go back in time? By going back in time, I mean stepping in and smelling piss and having a spider bite you. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean by going back in time in the Irish phone booth. Whoa, someone else left the super chat. Jay Fox, lovely picturesque town. I'm so glad you're enjoying it, Jay Fox. Thank you so much. Let's go on what's called the Medieval Mile. Beep. Robert says, Kay and their Northern Irish accent have treated you well. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you so much. Let's hear if the phone booth works. Does it have a dial tone? You know, I, I got earlier bitten by a spider. I'd rather not get bitten by another spider. One, one spider bite is enough for me today. For the light to change. I gotta take off my sweat because I'm sweating bullets. B. Griffin, be right back. I'll pull out the squash from my oven. <laughs> B. Griffin, I'm glad you're you're uh, cooking today. So we are walking through the medieval mile. There was two parts of the old town that were completely enclosed by walls and hopefully this light will change at some point. There was uh, two towns. There was Irish town and there was the high town. They were split between both of them. In the original church that ruled Ireland, the Catholic uh, Church, but the part here in Ireland, did not actually allow Irish Gaelics to be a part of the church. You had to have some type of accessory dating back to uh, England. So it wouldn't have been so good. Helen, you say, don't be annoying our spiders. You know, I try not to. So uh, I was um, at a beautiful cafe that has the same name as a cafe in New York City called Little Collins because it's named after a street in uh, Melbourne. And uh, I made the mistake of sitting below a hanging plant. <laughs> While in the middle of doing research for this video today, I see a spider just swinging right in front of me. And I'm trying to whisk it away. It keeps trying to get closer to me. And it bit my hand. So, uh, I, luckily, it's the, there's no swelling. So, I think I should be good. <laughs> but yes, I did get bitten by a spider. Did not expect that in the middle of Ireland. Maybe Australia, but not Ireland. So slam that like button right now. I have a little special thing to put over here. All right, bear with me.
All right, so I was about to go to the to the uh, postal box, but someone's having a conversation right by it. So <laughs> exactly when I was approaching it. Um, so wait up. Uh, let me show you around more of the medieval buildings. Well, actually, these are not medieval buildings, but this is following the medieval town plan. Okay, there we go. Is your spider sense tingling? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so here is the Irish postal box. I love it that it's green. And inside here, I have the new Mega Urbanists postcards directly from Ireland. Well, let me show it to you. I'm showing you the addresses. We got a bunch of them. Huge array of postcards. Right there. To receive postcards from uh, wherever I travel at least once a month, you need to become a mega urbanist. Mega urbanists get a postcard once a month. That is $20 or more on patreon.com slash urbanist or press that join button on YT and select the mega urbanist option. Patreon.com slash urbanist. And right here, you'll get one directly for you. So let's send them over. Everyone give a round of hearts to all the mega urbanists. Uh, we have Laureen, Stephanie, Maureen, Jason, Mater, Nader, uh, that's their nicknames, uh, Janice, Marianne, Carmen, Susan, Chris, and many, many others. Kay as well. Everyone give a round of hearts to the mega urbanists who are so kind enough to support on a monthly basis a very generous amount uh, to keep doing the show. And I have a very special announcement because of this. For the next, I'm extending my trip for two weeks. I am doing Ireland through mid-October. So I'll be here for at least the first two weeks in October. So thank you, Mega Urbanist and all the kind star senders. I'm staying more for Ireland and gonna cover a few more places. Let's send them over. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so excited. All right, let's keep, keep on walking. The postman will be busy. Indeed he will. Indeed he will. How much were the stamps? International stamps here to anywhere. Uh, which is nice is uh two dollars two euro two euro so as i mentioned there were two sections of the city this city wall was built in 1275 right over here and it ran through here let me pass right here ran through here and there were two different fortified cities along this moat slash stream Laureen is so excited. Yeah, Laureen. Just checked out Cake Face. Their cakes look amazing. I mean, do you guys want to try uh, one of the top rated cakes in all of Kilkenny uh, before we go on the medieval mile? Let me know. Okay, two week extension. Go to Wexford, says class. <laughs> Stay tuned, you'll see where I'm going. Oh man, I'm jealous, says Victoria. <laughs> so vote now or forever hold your peace. Um, Wendy says, please, please, honey. 
Uh, I'm so excited, says Loreen. I've been unable to watch since Dublin. I feel like I fell asleep on the train and you end up here. Yep, yep, that's exactly what happened. Uh, let's see who, who, who was that? Leslie, yep, exactly what happened. You gotta wake up, Leslie. Don't miss your stop. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go have a quick cake. I think, I think they should be small. Let's try it up. Bear with me. As I'm silent for a little bit going in. Hopefully there's no music in there.
hey everyone. So um, Irish people are very, very friendly and very talkative uh, in a very good way. So <laughs> the man was telling me about like uh, New York and how he loves it so much and he went to see the Mets and everything. Uh, so uh, that's why it took quite a while. And um, fortunately music is playing, so thank you everyone for sponsoring the, the, the entire sh show. I appreciate it. Oh, oops, I still have music playing. Um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned, here in Ireland, they're very friendly and very uh, good conversationalists. So that's why I took quite a while uh, and we we're discussing about New York and the Mets and everything. Uh, so that was really cool. That's why it took a little while. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, sorry for the, the music. Uh, they still have music. So thank you, the urbanists still uh, prim um, sponsoring the show, I really do appreciate it. Let me show you this cake. It looks really good. And there's actually a lot of people back here, so it seems to be a popular spot. So let's show you. So we got a cake made with pistachio, raspberry, like a cheesecake, and more raspberry. And it looks so good. Oh my god. Look at that. All right, I'm super excited to try this out. So this is known as one of the better places in the entire city. Why are people saying that the music is still on? The music is closed. All right, let's try this out. Andy says, eat, Andy. You gotta take patience, 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 Andy. Let's look at that. The top is like a jelly type of thing. Oh, wow. That's so good. So the bottom layer is pistachio or pistachio. No coffee. No, I already had enough coffee for today. I had three Americanos. Um, the top is like a, it's like a raspberry jelly. It's so interesting. The top is a raspberry jelly. Let me show you. So there's a, th this part is a jelly. It's like a guava jelly, similar to that. So you have this interesting mix of different uh, textures because you have the cake in the bottom with the pistachio, you have kind of a fudge with the raspberry, you have another kind of like cheesecake thing, and then you have on top a jelly. Wow. This is a great, great cake. Not too sweet. You can actually taste the pistachios. I'm going to say pistachios because we're no longer in Italy and we don't need to pronounce it the Italian way. And I love, love, love raspberry. Oh. Oh, that's delicious. Oh my God. You know, usually I don't finish these things in the broadcast, but my god i'm gonna try i'm gonna finish this entirely so feel free to ask me anything and Ronald says now you need a pint of guinness i think some beers would combine well there's a local beer called sullivan's which is delicious uh it is one of the best beers i've tried period uh, among the best beer I definitely tried so far in Ireland. 
uh, Sullivan's. We're going to pass by the brewery, or what used to be the brewery. Oh my god. Mm. So earlier today I had a fish and chips. I don't have any footage of it because it was such a memorable, beautiful experience. I had to completely be there 100% for those fish and chips. So I couldn't take any photos or video. I was just consumed by the utter beauty of those fish and chips. They were mind-blowing. And uh, now I can tell why Kilkenny is known as one of the better food areas in Ireland. That's how you climbed up down the coffee. No, uh, up and down the ladder, says Susie. It's all that coffee. Yeah, all that coffee gave me strength. <laughs> it gave me a lot of strength. All right, the last gigantic bite. Bottoms up. Cilantro. Beautiful. Pure beauty. All right. After that long climb up and down, the only one of two surviving round towers in Ireland that you can still climb up, this kick definitely hit the right spot perfectly. Your tongue is pink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Andy Wood says, You're killing me. I want some cake. My tongue is definitely pink. And don't worry, it's not from the blood of innocence. It's because of the cake. Let's go. So, <laughs> so uh, you didn't hear any audio, but I said uh, amazing, mind blowing cake, and the guy responded very, uh, very sassily. I don't really, I really don't like the chef, but you know, I'll do my best in telling him. <laughs> um, and I found it very funny. One, one funny thing I've noticed about Irish culture is. People really don't take compliments and they respond to it, respond to any type of compliment in a very, very sassy way. Not, not, not in a negative way, um, but it's kind of, uh, there's, there's a culture of modesty here and the way they, res they express modesty is through sassiness. And I've encountered that almost everywhere I've gone. Because you know, as an American, I'm used to saying, oh, compliments to the chef, it was amazing. Uh, but here, they... <laughs> 
you get some sass back. So here's one of the old ruined abbeys. This abbey is St. Francis Abbey, and this is where the famous beer from Kilkenny, Smithix, started. They were brewed by Franciscan monks. And at first they were brewed in what used to be these buildings, but then it became a larger operation. Now it's no longer a brewery because Guinness bought it out and they moved the brewing to another area. But you Franciscan monks used to brew beer right over here, right by the abbey. And this used to be the gigantic brewery, but no longer. The Smithix is one of the two. The other one I was referring to is Sullivan's. Hey, Lorraine, send a thousand stars. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Okay, I'm officially on my lunch break. Now I can focus on urbanist shenanigans. <laughs> Indeed, lots of shenanigans will take place. You know, uh, funnily enough, there's actually a tour here called Shenanigans Tour. And uh, apparently it's one of the better tours in Ireland. And they do it with comedians and magicians. So shenanigans, actual word used here in Ireland. Ireland is a state of mind. It's much more than a place. Well, what happened? Guinness rules. Here's one of the two buses in Kilkenny. A lot of these old bars, some of them, some of them more than hundred years old. In Germany, it is now allowed to brew beer on another place and still call it Kilkenny. What do you mean, Christoph? You mean uh, Germany doesn't call the beers after its town? You should go to Wicklow, says Rich, uh, Rachel. And Laureen, nice to see you here. You're tuning in very early. Laureen's watching from, wow, from Hawaii time. So what time is it in Hawaii right now? Very, very early. Susie says, the worst shenanigans, is it of Irish origin? I think it is. Uh, if anyone could search and let us know, definitely, but I think it is. You'll be a local come up to over, says Phil. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Anne Marie says, we want him in Donegal. Oh, I have not updated Nightbot. Nightbot has stuck in Dublin. Uh, so it hasn't been updated yet. Sorry about that. But uh, the weather still applies because generally this, it's the same weather across the entire island. Uh, that's why I've noticed doing cursory looks at the weather. I woke up at 4.50 a.m. to start watching. Oh my God, Lorraine. All right, we got to make this good for Lorraine. Here, I have a 360 tour of this house. It is the finest example of 16th century living in all, one of the best examples in all of Dublin, all of Ireland. It's the Roth house. And a couple moved here. They built this house back in 1594 all the way to 1601. Veronica says, would you be riding on the commuter train for us to see? You know, showcasing trains is a bit tough. Here in Ireland, they're so small that they get really full. Um, and then beyond that, some countries have very strict uh, rules against filming in public transportation. 
I'm not sure if Ireland is among them, uh, but that's why I usually haven't shown public transportation here in Europe, unlike what I do in the US. Fifteen sixty six. This courthouse was built. However, there has been a building here standing back since the early eight hundreds, and it was also one of the prisons. But the thing is, this was the place of public executions. The last official execution happened in the late eighteen hundreds, but people here have been executed throughout the nineteen hundreds, mostly men who have murdered their wives and they've been hung right here in front of the courthouse. Anthony from Jersey City, my wife, Kristen and I are watching your live streams. Uh, inspiration uh, for when we went to Lake Como in Milan two weeks ago. Oh my God, you went to Lake Como in Milan two weeks ago. Sorry. No, no worries. Uh, thanks for sharing your adventures, says Anthony. My pleasure, Anthony. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I'm so glad you went both to Lake Como and Milan, that's so epic. So epic. I've seen your videos on TikTok. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. I'm so glad you're enjoying yeah, them. I saw the one on the Cliffs of War and. The other one, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel doubling. You're gonna see Kill Kenny soon. Have are. a good day. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, shout out to the gentleman over there uh, watching on TikTok. Hey, Mighty Bull. Nice to see you here, Mighty Bull. Thank you so much for the super chat earlier. Claim to fame, brilliant, indeed. All right, let's cross the street. These lights take all ages. We're gonna just cross right now. You're getting famous in Ireland, says Sinead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone watching my TikToks. <laughs> Renee says, guess we have a new mayor of Kilkenny. <laughs> Hey, Dwayne, nice to see you here. Welcome. So let's go down through this way. Yeah, everyone, I keep referring to Kilkenny as a city class uh, because it has historically been a city for the longest time. Unfortunately, the government of Ireland has revoked its city status. But I am honoring the rules that are usually applied to other parts of Europe. And the city, if it was a city at least once in history, it usually stays a city. So we're going to call it the city of Kilkenny, even though it's uh, technically, according to the Irish government, just the town. Here's the Kittler's Inn, right here. One of the most infamous cases happened right here. In Ireland. So here we see it was established in 
So why is there a black cat on its logo? Let me know why you think that's the case. Thirteen twenty four. A woman is already married to her fourth husband. Every previous husband has died before then. And each previous husband, uh, every subsequent husband, was more wealthier and better status than the previous one. She was up to the fourth one, uh, who was a, la a man by the last name of Poor. And he was getting very skinny, losing a lot of the hair on his body. He was very sickly. And people started thinking, oh, is she poisoning him? Well, this was a few, many decades, about a century after the Norman invasion. And the Anglo-Normans led a heavy hand in taking over these parts of Ireland, including sending their own clergymen. Well, they sent over an English clergyman by the name of Bishop Ladred, Richard Ladred. And this man led Alice to have some dread because he accused her of witchcraft. He had a, a few accusations, witchcraft, cavorting with demons, messing around with demons, intercourse with demons. I'm not sure why he would uh, even know about that. Uh, the other thing is uh, extorting different husbands and also their, uh, her, her son-in-laws, our, our stepsons and stepdaughters. She would extort them, apparently. And also she ended up uh, slowly cursing all of her husbands. Well, he ended up sending an official notice to have her arrested to the Chancellor of Ireland. The thing is, her first husband was by the last name of Outlaw. And when, you see, when uh, Bishop Ladred sent over a warrant for Alice Kittler's arrest, well, the Chancellor had to approve it. And the Chancellor was a cousin of her first husband, Outlaw. He was not going to accept that. He was actually really pissed off. She also had very high connections here in uh, Kilkenny where one of the poorer family, Arnold, was actually um, arrested him and took him, Ladred, and asked him to put down the charges or else. Else meaning either he will be in prison for a very long time or even executed. Well, Ladred did not relent. He actually pushed much harder than ever before. He ended up getting out because there was no way to fully imprison a bishop, especially when you have new Anglo-Norman rulers. Well, he ended up accusing also the maid of Alice Kittler. Her name was Patronella. Alice Kittler ended up escaping. Apparently she head off over to England, but Patronella, her maid, was trapped, also accused of witchcraft. She was tortured and for days flogged. That means people were whipping her. Many different methods of torture. Apparently she lost her mind. And after she lost her mind, she accused of Alice Kittler of having intercourse with a few demons. Three men in pure black with iron rods. That was what Patronella apparently said, the maid. Well, that was proof for Bishop Ladred. Yes, Atlas Kittler is guilty, but she was no longer around. Alice Kittler still had connections, and she ended up getting Bishop Ladred down from his post, his property taken away, and he was nearly being excommunicated by the Catholic Church. He fought for decades to get his status and his property back. Well, he did. By 1360, he actually did win out again. He saved his name, only to die a few months later of natural causes. Not getting to enjoy the status he fought so hard to win back.
Alice Kittler, no one really knows what happened to her. She escaped. But Patronella was the only person killed on the accusation of witchcraft in Ireland, which ended up setting the precedent for many centuries to come in both Europe and America, with the Spanish Inquisition to follow, and then later the Salem witch trials over in Massachusetts. Luckily, Ireland never went down that path any further. They had enough of it. And that's why Bishop Badred was not allowed to go any further, because he would have unleashed a witch hunt that would have been a very bad precedent for Ireland. A lot of people said, how dare you even accuse people of witchcraft when Ireland is the land of saints and scholars. Luckily, he did not get too far, and Alice managed to escape. And this is where she lived, apparently. No one knows 100% for sure, but inns here in Ireland don't mean a place of lodging necessarily. They also mean a home. So this was Alice Kittler's home. Ronald says, died from cockles and mussels. <laughs> Maybe listening to too much cockles and mussels, yeah. Now it's a famous restaurant and a lot of people come here. And of course it's associated with hauntings. The weird thing is, many years later, people start researching more the history of Alice Kittler and finding out what really happened here. No one really knows for sure. But Bishop Ladred actually noted all the symptoms of her fourth husband that was dying were all the same symptoms of arsenic poison. Well, was she actually slowly killing her husbands with arsenic? Or was it coincidence? Or did Bishop Ladred actually know about poison? And if he did, why did he know about arsenic poison? Who knows? Klaus says, I wonder what happened to Alice Kittler. No one knows for sure, but people think that she just uh, lived in England the rest of her days. She had definitely a lot of wealth and a lot of status, so uh, she probably wouldn't have had too much issue living over there in England. And the only people against her really was that bishop, no one else. People really didn't believe too much um, that, those accusations. Susie says, such a lighthearted story, indeed. But history, four husbands, says JK. Well, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes husband, husbands just pass away. <laughs> and every time, you know, you just end up getting a richer husband. I mean, come on. Who, who doesn't have a richer husband every time? Why didn't he accuse her of poisoning her husband, says Andy. Yep, that was, that was one of many accusations. Poisoning, cursing, uh, cavorting with uh, demons, having intercourse with demons. Um, a bunch of other things. It was a lot of accusations. <laughs> Audrey says, I need four rich husbands. So, yeah. <laughs> and hi, Wilson. Wendy says, I've had 10 husbands. Oh, wow, Wendy, that's quite a lot. Maybe they made her angry, says Jacob. Maybe, maybe. Oh, nonetheless, here are some donuts from Boston. Yeah, there's a busker, yeah.
Jacob says in the 1800s, arsenic was used in green paint. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Kathy says, sometimes they all pass away with the same symptoms. You know, sometimes that happens. Kathy, yeah, you're right. Trisha says, a Turkish restaurant. Yeah, Trisha, actually, there is somewhat of a Turkish population here. Uh, there's a Turkish restaurant. There's a few Turkish barbers for some reason. Apparently, the Turks are good at barbering. Uh, and one of them actually looks really good. It doesn't look like cheap Turkish restaurants. It actually looks like good quality. Lucy says, I guess her cooking was to die for. Renee says, I think I need a, a poison antidote to be in this chat. Are there any marketplaces, uh, par, uh, marketplaces in Ireland? Are you referring to farmer's markets, Veronica? If there are, yes. Uh, there is a farmer's market here every Thursday, was what Kay was telling me. Uh, and... Um, I bet there's farmers markets everywhere, and I bet there's flea markets in a few cities. No, I don't know where. It doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like a place where it would be devoid of markets. Marguerite says, "Oh, I just left you." Oh, Marguerite! Oh, you just left town. I didn't know. Oh, Marguerite! It was awesome uh, running into you. So this is Little Collins. Uh, great cafe, highly recommend it if you come here to Kilkenny. It's also a CBD dispensary, so they sell CBD products. And they have CBD edibles. So I felt very chilled out as I got bitten by a spider. <laughs> it was right here, I sat right here. I was reading history on Kilkenny, I got bitten by a spider. MK, am I seeing an Airbnb? That Airbnb being K's, <laughs> K's kitchen and home. No, no, I'm not saying the Airbnb. I'm being hosted by an OG urbanist. Cynthia says, I thought you were going to say you were smoking a blunt. No, no. I mean, I, I don't think it's allowed to smoke outside, but uh, they do sell for smoking, I think, in the privacy of your own home. George says, the scene of a crime. Yeah, indeed. All right, who wants to go to the castle? Anyone want to go to the castle? Outside, at least. Stay tuned, tomorrow we'll go inside. Kay's house is so cute, says Trisha. <laughs> indeed it is, yeah. It's a wonderful place to stay. Five stars on Airbnb, five stars. Hey. Who wants to go to the castle? Shame St. Patty's didn't get rid of uh, spiders along with the snakes. That's what I'm wondering. Why didn't St. Patty take away the spiders too? He just took away the snakes. Spiders are just as deadly, both metaphorically and literally, as snakes. My friends got married in Ireland. Oh, that's so awesome. Let me see if I can cross. Here we have hurling, one of the famous sports. I've seen you yeah. Yesterday, you were yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah I love oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, <laughs> two. <laughs> and shout out to the person who just said hi. Give them a round of hearts. Didn't catch their name either, but shout out to them. Here is a statue of hurling. Now this. Rock is very important because it matches a lot with the rock all around us. Another name for Kilkenny is the Marble City. Now, not marble in the same exact way as the ones in Italy, which is pristine white marble, but here they have that black, dark limestone. 
and the quarries are nearby called the Black Quarry. And this is where they get their stone from. So this stone is taken from all around uh, nearby, only one kilometer away. And that's where Kilkenny gets its nickname, the Marble City. So hurling is an old Irish sport. They used to play without helmets. However, the players, hurling is like kind of like cricket on crack, like Irish crack, C U R. A I C. Well, also the other type of crack. So, cricket and crack, or basically rug, rugby on roids. It is very, very intense, and they used to not wear helmets at all. But the thing is, the players started losing eyes, tongues, teeth, noses. <laughs> Ears were been bitten off. <laughs> it was it was quite intense. Don't call it cricket. It has no no relation. All right, Veronica. But uh, you know, there's still some smacking of balls around. So um, that's why I made the cricket analogy because of the uh, smacking of balls. But it's rugby on roids. Dedicated to all who hurl for Kill Kenny. It's like a field hockey, yeah, kind of as well. It's like a very hairy hockey. Those are tight shorts. Indeed, look look at the calves on these men. Wendy says, woohoo, balls all the way. Yeah, yeah, they smack a lot of balls around. And, uh, and it's a very intense sport. A lot of the buildings we're seeing all around here were built between the 1700s, 1800s, mostly, those two centuries. And of course, the modern buildings were built, you know, modern times. But ooh, where's my lucky charms? Right over here. Lucky Charms is actually not sold in Ireland. This place imports cereals and candies. That's where I also bought a few, a few postcards. Here's the oldest, oh no, this is not the oldest bar. It's around the corner. This is one of their famous bars. Oh, landing in. Christine says, oh, uh, nice statue, indeed. Yeah, nice statue, indeed. Wendy says, can't stop laughing now. Why, Wendy? Because of all the smacking balls around? Are you hurling right now with laughter? All right, let's go to the castle. for this Kilkenny wander. Audrey says, Harry hockey and snapping of balls. I need to watch this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can uh, YouTube um, hurling. It's an it's a interesting sport to see. TC says, the accent of the man at the Cathedral of South Dublin, not English. Really, TC? Wow, I couldn't detect any Irish from, from that. Interesting, you say South Dublin. Fascinating. So we already saw Roth House. We saw St. Kenneth's Cathedral. Cool. There's the Talbot Tower. The walls of Kilkenny. And this way is the castle. It's called a plummy accent, says Veronica. Okay. So 
he was speaking an interesting Dublin accent that sounded very posh English. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean that in a positive way. The, the, the man had a very nice accent. I liked it. Um, let's go to the castle. Marguerite says, you're sure doing Kilkenny proud, Ariel. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm doing Kilkenny proud. I had <laughs> two people randomly bump into me. That's awesome. It's always in the most random towns where I get a lot of people bumping into me. No one in Italy. Not even once in Italy. Pro tip, if you become a very famous white tier, like myself, very, very famous, <laughs> don't, uh, don't come to Ireland because people are going to recognize you all over the place. But maybe go to Italy. No one's going to say hi to you. No one. You'll feel like a complete nobody. <laughs> all right, let's uh, visit the castle. So we have Connor the Crow, he's beckoning us in. Connor the Crow, all right, thank you. Oh, there was, yeah, 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 indeed, indeed there was. All right, Connor the Crow, he's gonna give us some food. Here is the castle of Kenny. We've actually visited a real castle. 1173, the Anglo-Normans took over. The man who was in charge of that was Strongbow. You might know his name because you're probably drinking his cider <laughs> nowadays. But Strongbow set up here an earthwork castle on this mound because it was a perfect vantage point to see the entire city, to see the river, anyone coming in and out. Strongbow was determined to take over the island of Ireland on behalf of the Anglo-Normans. Anglo-Normans were a mix of them invading England for about a hundred years and then they were coming from northern France and they were from Viking ancestry. Wish you can go in, Sean. Oh, we can and we will. Tomorrow, stay tuned. In 1207, the Lord of Leinster, Ireland was traditionally split up into four provinces, and those four provinces are still talked about Munster, Leinster, and let me know the other two. A stone castle was built here, and then in 1391 is when we started getting this one, this huge castle. 1391, the Butler family took over and they made a few additions. Ulster is another one. Yes, yes, we got ulcers and then we have the other one starts with a C. Pop quiz time. Leinster, Ulster, Munster. Unfortunately, the other one does not. I don't think it rhymes. Hana, let me know how I pronounce uh, the last province. That one's a, a bit trickier.
here is where we took the river ride yesterday. So if you want to see the castle from the perspective of the river, just watch yesterday's video. And yes, Trisha, that's right. No politics, anyone. 1391, the Butler family who were Catholic and of Irish Gaelic or Gallic descent, they end up taking over this castle in 1391. And they ruled over this castle all the way until 1935. About 1840 is when they finish this modern version of the castle. But they built it during an era in European history where people were obsessed with medieval style. They wanted to make everything medieval as much as possible. Then in 1922, Lord and Lady Ossery, that was the name, uh, the official name of the butlers. They were woken up at 5.30 a.m. in the day in 1922. Their own servants came over and saying, the castle's being taken over. It was being taken over by the Irish anti-treaty Republicans, the people who did not want to sign the treaty with the English to make it part of the UK. They took over the castle and apparently held up Lord and Lady Ossery, the butlers. They refused to relent, so they had to stay inside the castle. Then the other Irish army came over, the ones who wanted to sign the treaty, and they sieged the castle for a few days. Lord and the lady had to stay trapped inside, and luckily they survived the siege. The funny thing is, once they came in, the Irish army said that they were the, the liberators of the Lord and Lady. But the Irish anti-treaty Republicans said that they were the protectors of the Lord and Lady. Oh, well, <laughs> they survived. But by 1935, they just no longer had the funds to sustain this gigantic castle. And they sold it off for a mere... Less a few pounds, few pounds. It was a honorary transaction because apparently it had some high importance to the history of Ireland. By the 1960s, they auctioned off almost all their goods inside. Their furniture, their beautiful uh, silverware and dishware, everything was auctioned off. Since then, the Osseries slash butlers have been trying to get back their goods uh, from the market whenever they see it on the market. Now it's owned by the Office of Public Works. So luckily it's now very well maintained where for a few decades, especially while Ireland was trying to figure things out, it was laying in ruins basically. The crow keeps photobombing. Yes, indeed. Connor, Connor is very eager for the spotlight. Very eager. They had a lovely view of the struggle. They did indeed. They got full on view of the Irish Civil War from uh, this, these views. Ariel is not the only one wearing colorful pattern shirts. Yeah, a few other men I've seen wearing colorful pattern shirts. Women also wear uh, florals, of course. What is the square footage? Oh, I don't know, but the butlers own 2 million acres in Ireland. But I don't know what the square footage is here. Wow, green trees and views. Yeah, it's magnificent. Uh, are, there, are mosquitoes an issue like it was in Italy? Not really. It's too cold for mosquitoes at this time. I'm not sure if it ever gets warm enough for mosquitoes. Uh, what's an, an issue, but luckily they're a little bit less annoying than mosquitoes, are gnats. Or midges, I think is another name for them. But they're annoying because they give you these tiny little bites. So much history, says uh, MK. Thank you, my pleasure.
Ireland has midges, which are bad as mosquitoes. Yep, a little bit annoying. They give you all these tiny little bites, usually around one's hands. Too bad for the bench. Yeah, 5.8. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a good bench. But beautiful place, though. I wonder if Gerald Butler is related. Well, Gerald Butler is Scottish. The thing is, the Butlers actually spread far and wide across parts of Europe, namely France and uh, UK, though I'm not 100% sure if they're related. If anyone can actually figure it out, do let us know. Is Gerald Butler, the famous actor of the film 300, have any relation to, to the Butlers of Ireland? B. Griffith says 2 million acres equals 10% of Ireland. Yeah, they, they owned a huge chunk. They definitely were the, one of the most powerful royals in this area. Are you touring inside the castle? Yeah, Gerald Butler. I mistakenly, <laughs> I mistakenly said Gerald Butler. Yeah, Gerard. Um, the castle, you'll be seeing it tomorrow from the inside. Stay tuned. Tomorrow from the inside. Uh, they're closed by this time because uh, here attractions close early. Ireland, unlike Italy, is a very early country. So be sure to wake up early if you want to see a lot of the sights. Otherwise, you're going to run into a lot of things closing down. And here is the horse stables that was expanded later in the 1800s uh, of the castle. And we walked here with Kay, but let's walk one more time again. Butler all around Ireland is a fairly common name. Okay, says Gallo. Thank you. Yeah, it should be because uh, that name denotes what the family used to do, <laughs> originally at least. They used to be butlers. Where's Kay today, says Dindin. Kay is doing her thing. But Kay will make at least one more appearance on Urbanist. Stay tuned. So Laureen, the castle broadcast will be at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, Irish time, Ireland time. That's 11 a.m. New York time. And I'm not sure what, what time is it in, in uh, Hawaii. Do let us know. What's, what's the Hawaiian time? Hyde says spiritual town. Yeah. And then there will be one more 4 p.m. broadcast on Sunday. And then I'll probably be starting up again on Wednesday. Stay tuned. So the broadcast moving forward will be Wednesday through Sunday. I'm taking Mondays and Tuesdays off. Those days sometimes make TikToks. Veronica says uh, Ger Bar uh, Gerard Butler has a Irish family, but he's from Scotland. He had to apologize for his terrible Irish accent in P.S. I love you. Oh, no. I thought the thought an Irish accent would be easy for Glaswegians, says Rene. Oh, no. Just watch the film P.S. I love you. Scotland looks very clean, says Jeff. Jeff, this is Ireland. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> it might look similar to, to Edinburgh because they think they use similar stone, but no, this is, this is Ireland. Welcome to Ireland. 
Do they have earthquakes in Ireland? I don't think so, Erebus. I don't think so. I think it might be very rare. From everything I've been studying, I have not really heard about earthquakes at all. So I don't think they're really prevalent, though anywhere around the world is vulnerable to earthquakes. But more other places in the world are more vulnerable than others. Right, let's continue walking this way. Raul, nice to see you here. Yeah, everyone, the schedule 4 p.m. every day through mid-October while I'm here in Ireland, 4 p.m. Irish time, Wednesdays through Sundays. Unless otherwise noticed, because I am doing travel between the cities, so there might be a day where I might not go live. All right. Why would an EU country use the pound sterling? Pounds are, were used here until Irish independence. Um, and then a little bit later when Ireland joined the EU, we started using the euro. So it's the euro here in Ireland. The pound sterling is used in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is Ireland, but it's part of the United Kingdom of Britain and Northern Ireland not part of the Republic of Ireland. Wow, MK, very generous of you. MK, $20 super chat and says, looking forward to the castle tour. Always want to go to Ireland and explore castles. Yeah, and this is one of the more famous ones. I think this is the famous one. Um, so I'm so glad to show you the castle tour. And um, let's see. Is there, there's one more thing I can show you. This one's a little bit more of a secret. So let me know if you want to see one little secret left on this broadcast. Kilkenny's not really that big of a city, so I don't think there's that much more um, to walk around unless for a few laneways. Otherwise, we've seen pretty much uh, most of the historic center. Okay, so, uh, Wendy said, don't leave me now. <laughs> yes, I'm loving the history, says MK. All right, let's go this way. Kathy says, uh, share the secret. We won't tell anyone kind of cool nice little ruin in a street you would not really think of going down as a tourist yeah. Susie says before I go back to work <laughs> so we're gonna take about 10 minutes to get to this last stop is it Guinness time says Susie it just might be I after this, we'll be heading over back uh, to Kay's home. She's hosting me for these few days as I explore Kilkenny. And uh, she has some Smithix, which I'm going to try, which is not Guinness. But it's the local brew that used to be made by the Franciscan monks. What's that beeping sound? That beeping sounds from the intersections, the crosswalks. Which, which are beep when you can cross. Beep slow when you can't, and beep fast when you can. 
Oh, this is a cool view. Look at this, despite the garbage. Uh, ooh, cool view. Look at that. It's a cool photo opportunity. Here we have some hurling. Not like hurling in a, after a very long night of drinking. Not that type of hurling. Hurling with the, with the stick, with the bat. Ah, here we have the Shi Alms House. Kay told us a little bit about this. But this is a, a very well-off business person, merchant from Kilkenny, ended up opening up this alms house. But it was very specific. He only wanted six women that were widowed, 50 plus, and um, didn't have any other means to live. And six men. The men had to be unmarried, and they had to be uh, in complete destitute circumstances, but also be honest men. Those men were allowed to live there as well. The and they each had their own floor. Is they had two entrances. The front entrance was either for the one of them, the men or the women, and the other entrance was for the other one. So they can never meet. So, yep, no, it's not what you think. It was not a matchmaking service. Din Din says, uh, uh, Kay should open up a bed and breakfast. <laughs> bread and breakfast. Because there's a lot of bread involved. Okay, so kind enough to make amazing bread. We just walked up there earlier. It's very quiet. Is everyone in the pub, says Gary. Ah, that's a good question. I am not 100% sure. Um, I, I think, I don't think Kilkenny gets really that active. It's, it's a town of 2,600 people. 26,000 people, I mean. So 26,000, that's smaller than a lot of New York City neighborhoods. So keep that in mind. There's neighborhoods in New York that are two or three times bigger than this. This is the oldest pub still running here in Kilkenny, dating back to 1703. Ireland's first black and white pub, which I don't know what they mean by black and white pub. But the first brewed in Kilkenny, so they serve Smithix. Mmm, right that oh, smells so good. Hey. Hello. Oh, it smells so good. Wow, I love the smell of uh, the beer. Ooh, that's amazing. Have a beer and dinner. That's exactly what I'm going to do later. Kay is making some bacon and cabbage. Which admittedly does not sound so appealing, but apparently every Irish person has told me that I must try it. So tonight I'm trying bacon and cabbage, which is uh, bacon uh, with cabbage. That's, that's the dish. Ooh, a lot of people. Fucking <laughs> palace. I put the camera down, but there's a, there was a whole horde of people coming in. Renee says bollocks is a bad word. I don't think bollocks is a bad word. I'm not sure if the Irish use it, but um, at least in England, bullocks just means bullshit. Not in a very vulgar way, not at all. Bullocks is more kind of casual. It's like, oh wow, that's BS. It's more like saying BS than the full word bullshit. That's a picture, says Ludo. Oh yes, indeed. So this is where I went with Kay with that very first video. Really great pub, as you saw inside during that video. Check it out. Matt the Millers. 
It's spelled bullocks in Ireland, says Rene. Oh, interesting. Castle looks amazing in the backdrop. It really does. It really does. All right, let's go to our last stop here in Kilkenny. The man is running on the run. Very long street, says Veronica. Oh yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. They're long streets. They're following the same um, urban planning of the medieval times. So it's the Anglo-Normans that really built this city. He's running faster than cars. Yes, indeed, I am walking faster than some cars. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you could speed here in this. I don't think you should speed in this tiny little street. So this is the brewer here in Kilkenny called Sullivan's, and they have amazing, amazing beer. Truly amazing beer. I tried it when I had a brew with with Kay. Let me just pop in. This is not the secret. <laughs> this is just a, a random tap room. Yeah. Okay, so it's more of a typical bar, but they have like a huge outdoor seating area. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. All right, not too much to see. Looks Anglo-French, says Rene. Well, yeah, the, the Anglo-Normans were Anglo-French. And guess what? Uh, they actually, French was actually the official language for quite a while in those early medieval days. So imagine that here in Kilkenny speaking French. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bienvenue from Kilkenny. Imagine me saying that instead of Ken uh, <laughs> Milifaucha. Brian says, we, oui. yep. If I were to do, if I were doing this live stream back in the 13, in the 1200s, that exactly would have been the case. Lots of beautiful pubs all around. I love the, the look of the pubs. Oh, Renee says, ooh, what's the crack? Oh, I'll show you the crack. Who wants some crack? Let me know in the comments. I am strictly talking about Irish crack, which is the Irish word for having fun or for any news or any interesting stories. Strictly that, ladies and gentlemen. We're not referring to American crack. Here's St. John's Church. Cafe Roma, yeah. It's funny, uh, I, I was walking around with Kay, and Kay asked Kay, oh, they, it's, a, it's an Italian restaurant. And she was like, nope, they just sell sandwiches and fish and chips. <laughs> Sometimes here, some of the pub names have names that you would think is like some type of ethnic restaurant, and they're not. Wendy says, crack is whack. Yes, indeed it is. Okay, this coffee shop is amazing, Towering Castle. All right, so final stop. We're gonna 
walk around this residential street, which a lot of people wouldn't walk if they're a tourist. But this is Ma Maudlin Street is derives from the name Magdalene. Hey, yes. Oh, from Amazon. It's called DJI Osmo Mobile. Yeah, DJI, DJI. Yeah, yeah, you'll find it there. Yeah, no problem, have a good day. All right. Oh, I can see this church. Yeah, everyone, I have steady hands. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people are commenting on the steadiness of my videos. Um, there's a trick to actually making the video extra steady even if you have a gimbal. Uh, first, you have to balance the gimbal well, which I've noticed a lot of people don't do, even uh, professionals. Um, and then two, you have to walk steadily with your knees because if you're walking kind of fast, it's going to be a little bit shaky. So this is Magdalene Street. It's derived from Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, um, St. Mary Magdalene, the, the order behind um, that group in Catholicism that were nuns set up a hospital over here. And that hospital treated lepers. And those, that hospital, is no longer really surviving, but the one thing that does survive are these towers right over here. And they're all around. In this random residential street. And there's one, one more down here. And they were part of Mary St. Mary Magdalene's hospice or hospital treating lepers do your arms ever get tired if it's after many hours yes after after like a six or seven hour live stream it does indeed and i switch arms yes i guess i'm switching arms <laughs> there we go that's all switch There it is. That's the other one. Susan says, no, no bell on Twitch, but you can sign up for notifications. Yeah, yeah, Twitch has notifications. Thank you so much, Susan. We've been doing great on notifications. Ooh, let's check out this back street. Maybe we see a little bit more of the outline of the old hospital. Uh, we can't really see too much. Lorene says, I have big guns. Hey, hey. All right. So right over here, we have one of the towers. If anyone has any last remaining questions of Kill Kenny, we're going to see the castle tomorrow. And I hope you enjoyed these explorations of Kill Kenny. After that, I'll be off to other places. Stay tuned. In this random Residential street. Look at that. It's kind of cool. You wouldn't see this in the U.S. <laughs> Around the medieval tower in the middle of the street. You would not see that in the U.S. Careful with your gimbal. It's precious. Indeed it is, Wendy. Indeed it is. 
apparently you can still walk inside. But of course, it's deemed too dangerous. But uh, let's see if I can shine a light here. It's going to be a little bit hard, but there is some tombstones inside. This is like the coolest thing. This is a random middle or random residential area. And this. Huh. That's amazing. So Denny says, did you try cake from the, the place that, that Kay recommended? I did indeed. I did try cake. Uh, it was quite delightful. Uh, highly recommend Cake Face. And Wendy says, oh my, scary. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if it's, it's associated with Haunted Tales. Who knows? Maybe. Um, that's the toilet. Says, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, this is not Dublin. Um, you're, you're man of the telly. You're man of the telly. I love your name. Uh, get yourself a pint after all that walking around. I will. Lorraine says, am I going to stream the bacon and cabbage? Hmm. Let me know. Do you guys want me to stream? Who's that standing on the window? I don't know. Are you referring to this? I hope no one because no one's supposed to be in there. <laughs> that would be a ghost. Uh, if it's someone from the other houses, you know, some random person just looking, uh, wondering why is there a man on the camera in this random street? Let them eat cake, says Zap. And be careful, Ariel. I always call 911 if I see someone wandering around my neighborhood if I don't recognize them. <laughs> you know, I never encountered that, Zap. Uh, luckily, never encountered that. And this is a tourist area. And this is in the tourist books. It's not completely secret. It is in the tourist books. So I think people kind of know that this has to be covered. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Maybe I'll do a, a tiny little live of bacon and cabbage. I can't promise anything. But stay tuned, maybe. Um, Laureen wanted to see some bacon and cabbage. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to head back to Kay's. Uh, it's a bit of a walk and then I'm going over uh, to eat some bacon and cabbage and that might be live stream or it might be on Instagram. Stay tuned for one of those uh, and you'll see. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. From beautiful Kilkenny, Ireland, Slangofol, ladies and gentlemen. Slangofol. <laughs>